this next review is the Katana 53. Katana make proven blue water passage makers. The light construction, the dagger boards and the luxurious interior mean that this should tick a lot of boxes, but what will we really think? So the first thing to assess when we are looking at safety design is the helm position. Katana are famous for these outward helm positions. Fantastic for visibility, fantastic for docking, but as you know, for long passages, are they gonna be ideal? Here's our thoughts, and then we'll head over to the owner, Jessica, to hear her thoughts. Just like the weather's kind of akin to crossing I know, and that's what you would see, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you're trying to be out at an exposed helm position. I know. You know, it's blowing 25 knots here and it's uncomfortable for two minutes. Yeah. You tried doing that for two weeks across the Atlantic. Yeah. The um, exposed knots yeah. is my main issue with the timer. Yeah. So how do you deal with that yourself? Yeah. We, love the ex we love the helm position. And why do you um, love it so much? The main reason we love it is uh, for docking, okay. for maneuvering. Yeah. Because when coming into a new marina, yeah. uh, a new dock, we yeah. have perfect visibility down yep. the length of the boat. Yeah. Perfect visibility of the stern. Yep. Um, so whether we're docking to port or yep. to starboard side, we yep. see exactly what that's, we need to see. Right. Yep. So when you're on passage, where do you position yourself when you're on watch? Most of the time, we're exactly on that chase lounge yep. on the sofa in the salon. Yeah. So on watch, um, we don't have much need uh, yeah. to, first of all, we never have a need to go on the front deck. Yep. Um, all of the maneuvers, uh, all of the reefs, everything is done from here in the cockpit. Yep. Yeah. And that's wonderful. So imagine yep. if you need to take a third reef, yep. everything is done from right here in the cockpit. Yep. You never have to go forward. Yep. And that's, it's very safe, obviously. Yep. And also for the other people who are not on watch, who are sleeping, yeah. we sleep a lot more soundly because yeah. you know that your companions are exactly. not having to go forward or exactly. not having to go upstairs. Yeah. yeah. Wet stairs. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, from that position, it's very comfortable, obviously. Yeah. And, and you can. Visibility. Yeah. Visibility out the front windows, visibility through all the windows, yeah. and also visibility of um, your chart plotter, yeah. your radar. Yeah. Uh, you can hear the VHF radio perfectly yeah. maneuvering. Yeah. Um, and then also, most of the time, we're all on autopilot yeah. doing crossings or we're never. Yeah. So here we're out of the sun, we're protected from wind, everything. Yep. We have perfect visibility throughout yeah. the boat from the steering station or anywhere. Yep. Yep. Um, and then also the other thing a lot of Katana owners are doing, because really this concern more comes in if what happens to the autopilot, something yeah, like this. Exactly. Um, so it can be as simple as simply installing a second autopilot yeah. system. Yeah. Why not anyway, yeah, exactly. if you're going yeah. on the you kind of... Doesn't see. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. thanks to Jessica, she's obviously very happy with that helm position. We still have questions about it, but that debate will rage on. Elsewhere, the Katana 53 had lovely wide side decks. There's not a lot to trip up on, and you've got good flush mounted hatches. Other features we liked, there was good line stowage, everything was to hand, there were good grab rails throughout the boat, and the engine access was not at the very back of the transom. So how are we going to score the Katana 53? It is a safe and well designed boat. Those outboard helm stations are still a concern to us. Similarly, we could not see the position of the life raft, so we are going to score this an 8 out of 10. So as we always start with these assessments, let's look at the engine bay. Oddly enough, the entire time that we were on this Katana, the engine bays were occupied. So let's have a look at what we can see. We can see that the filtration system is clear and easily accessible. Similarly, we can see a good and robust steering mechanism there and the RAM for the autopilot. There is no doubt in my mind that a craft of this quality will have good access and a well-built steering mechanism. The build quality and finish are good throughout. Now let's hear what I had to say on the day. It's good, let's look at this joinery. Again, it's lightweight. You can feel the, there's nothing in those doors, so they obviously do a lot to... We've talked to a few Katana owners. We know that their joinery is made lightweight for a reason. And sturdy. I mean, you compare this to... Beep! Sturdy. Elsewhere we found this boat to be well made. Everything went together perfectly. There seemed to be no miss or ill-fitting surfaces and I can imagine that this would drastically reduce the amount of noise and squeaking on passage.
I like this, but again, it's a 53 foot yacht and I would expect to like it. It's a sturdy. Yeah, sturdy. Good. So aside from the slight overuse of the word sturdy, what else did I think of this boat? I have one slight issue and it is these corners. While they are mitered to stop them being sharp or dangerous edges, I didn't like the finish. It's a really minor thing and I am clearly splitting hairs, but they could have been done to a higher standard. So is the Katana built to the same quality that we saw in Uchimura and Seawind? Not exactly and not quite. So we're gonna award this a nine out of 10 for build quality. Let's first take a look at the outside living space on this Katana 53. The cockpit is of course as you would imagine spacious with plenty of seating and the configuration allows for as many people as you want to sit in the cockpit with extra chairs. Inside the saloon continues from the cockpit you have an indoor outdoor kind of feel to it. You've also got this all important forward facing nav station which as we've discussed at length is an important feature to us. There's plenty of storage, including cold storage, which you would, of course, expect on a 53-foot catamaran. From the nav station, you've also got fantastic 360 views, excellent visibility, and brilliant ventilation as well with those forward-facing opening hatches. Don't forget the all-important wine fridge right there that you can see. And moving into the galley, you have all the space in the world that you could possibly want, loads of storage, and I really like the U-shaped galley. I think this was one of the strengths of this catamaran. Now let's go down into the guest hull and we'll go forward first because of course the aft cabin is exactly the same as on the master hull. So first of all good ventilation with those opening hatches and the size of the bed I think is fair. This is a 53 foot catamaran but it is performance orientated so the hulls might be a little bit narrower than you expect. So now let's go down and take a look at the master hull. Again the aft cabin will be the same on both hulls. And as you can see, this is a really lovely spacious area and it's got an island berth as well, which I find really important. So this is obviously the master cabin and uh, ventilation, as you may know by now, is my big uh, thing that I look at and it's got really good ventilation. There's no hatch uh, or window up above, which is unusual, but um, that's okay because it's got three big opening hatches there. There aren't any opening hatches in this little corridor space between the bedroom and the bathroom, which is again a little unusual. This is where the dagger boards live, so you've got a little bit of restriction in your hull width or your interior hull uh, volume, but it doesn't seem to affect anything here. And then you've got your shower room. Good ventilation in here as well with two hatches, one in the shower and one just um, near the sink. And then you've got the toilet in a separate little space here. There's no door, but it still feels separate, which is nice actually, that is really nice. And then you've got a little opening hatch there. That's <laughs> right, probably some well needed ventilation at times. But yeah, so the, the master hull is actually really nice. It's um, really bright and spacious, um, despite the fact that there's no hatches up above. Uh, there's plenty of side windows and side opening hatches, and um, it's really nice. The bed is really spacious. You've got access on both sides, which is a really good feature, very important when you're living on the boat. Um, and the actual cabinetry as well, as Nick was saying, is, um, is of a pretty high standard. Feels very solid, there's no movement in that at all. Overall, no major complaints as far as the interior design is concerned. Well done, Katana. We're just docking one point because the finish isn't quite as high as we would like. But other than that, 9 out of 10. So let's look at some statistics for the Katana 53. She comes in at 16 meters, that's 53 feet on the nose. The beam is 8.65 meters, 28 foot. And the draft, variable draft with those dagger boards, 1.4 meters to three meters. So not super shallow, and you're not gonna get into those really shallow anchorages, but variable draft is a fantastic thing. Of course, displacement for 53 foot boat, 14 tons. 
As for performance, well, with those dagger boards, she is going to point high. She is of lightweight construction and carries a huge sail area. There were no polar diagrams available at this time. However, articles in the press suggest 19 knots in 25 knots of wind. So pretty dazzling performance from the Katana 53. We are happy to award this boat an 8 out of 10. Well done. Now let's move on to value for money for the Katana 53. The base price for this boat is 1 million 81,000 euros. That's 1.2 million US dollars or 990,000 British pound. However, fully spec, you're looking at 1.2 million euros, 1.3 million dollars or 1.1 million pounds. So how do we score this for value for money? You get a lot of boat for your money, but it is a lot of money. You are also paying for European labor rates. So we're going to score this an average five out of 10 for the Katana 53. So that was the very beautiful Katana 53. Let me just start by saying thank you to Jessica and her husband on SB Jade for taking the time to show us around and answer our questions. So thank you to Jessica. So as we always do with these discussions, let us start with the positives. So the positives, Teresa. Well, Katana is definitely a performance catamaran. Yep. So that's a huge positive. Yep. Uh, they've got the dagger boards and they are um, well built, but still a lightweight boat. Yes. Um, the build quality inside, the, the, the quality of the finish is very good and the build quality elsewhere on the boat was pretty good. Yep. Um, it is, my understanding is that the Katanas are semi-customizable, so what you saw in that video in terms of, you know, the, the colour of the sofa and the, the bench tops and all that kind of thing, my understanding is that that is customizable. Yep. So you can kind of design the, the type of uh, style that you like. Do you know whether the layout is customizable? I think to a certain, I know that on um, the 47s that you can get built, um, you can put, yes, there is a site, you can have the chart table in different places. Okay, so there is some. So I'm assuming that you can, so yes. With the 53, for yes. sure. The 53, uh, it was the only Katana on, on show. Yep. So that's why we filmed it. Uh, I think it's too big for us. But it is a, a beautiful boat and there's lots of options and it's got good performance and obviously the 53 is way out of our price range but the smaller versions, the good thing, one of the good things about Katanas is that they do have a range all the way from, I think the 42 is their smallest up. Yep. So, you know, they're not just focusing on the 50 foot market, which, yep. unlike a lot of other boat manufacturers, which I think is um, not good. So. Katana do give you a lot of options, uh, both in terms of size and style and colour and that kind of thing. And yeah, there's not really much not to like, apart from the open helm stations. Okay, well, to, let me go over the positives and we'll talk about those open yeah. helms, because they are something that we talk about a lot. Okay, so positives about the Katana range and particularly the 53. Um, positives, the, it is a really well-built boat. Mm. Um, we have seen many Katanas. We've got friends many. who've got Katanas. Yeah. Um, so we know that they're lightweight. They are built in with honeycomb panels so that they to save weight. They are very stiff, they're very strong, they don't flex, they don't squeak. Mm. So they are a notch, you know, we are talking, you know, the higher echelons of catamaran manufacture. Yeah. And really, you know, if you're looking at one kind of group of, of boats, which is the production cats, these katanas fall into the Uchimere Sea Winds and you know the performance luxury catamarans. So, um, in positives, very, very well built. Mm. Um, I would say that despite the fact we're doing positives, <clears throat> we have looked at older katanas. So, let's just go back to um, when we saw the 471, which is a, a, a model from the from the I think it was 2000, 2000 2001. So, if you look at katanas back. Um, 15, 20 years ago, mm. compared to Ultramers 15, 20 years ago, you would go into a Katana and compare it to the Ultramer and go, wow, the Katana interior fit out is so much better than Ultramer. Now, having already done the Ultramer 51 video and looked at the 5X and the 4X um, and seen a Katana 53, I actually think that Ultramer have leapfrogged mm. Katana in terms of quality of interior finish. Yeah, I agree completely. And I know that I know that we're talking about um, just one boat that was their choice. And it's not to do with any choices that they made for colours or, mm. or wood choices. I just felt 
that Uchima is better made, is slightly yeah. better fitted out. Yeah. Um, and that was apparent. I know that in the video I kind of was harping on about those mitered edges, but whether that's a design thing and they're meant to look like that, to mm. me they just didn't look as good as they could have done. Yeah. And don't forget, this boat is over a million bucks. Well over. Well over a million mm. bucks. So, well, it's over a million bucks. It's 1.1, 1 1.3 1 million, oh, okay. depending on where you are. 1.1 okay. 1 .1 to 1.3 million bucks. So it's a lot of money. It's not as well finished as the Ultramare, and it is not as well finished as the Sea Wind, mm. in my opinion. It, so it's just opinion. Yeah. Um, and really, I kind of can't help but feel that Katana have lost their crown. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, there's the posit positives about this boat. It's it's a beautiful boat. It is a real performance catamaran. The performance is scintillating the dagger boards, give it real pointing ability. Mm. It is light. It is a light boat. It is a luxury boat. And it will easily take you across oceans. Oh, yeah. And so you want to circumnavigate in that? Absolutely. You good. Um, negatives about this boat. Now, I know, that, I know that you are champing at the bit to go on about these home stations. I know that you are, and I am. And I'm not going to steal your thunder here, but I'm just going to preface this by saying that I think we both agree. Mm. Your helm station, the helm station that has a wheel or a tiller, so whether you've got, you know, should be your primary helm station. Yeah. And I am never going to hear anyone tell us that that, is not, that, that shouldn't be the case. It's, I, it's bunkum. Mm. So to me, navigating from the inside of a boat is your secondary helm station. And so. The primary helm station is where the wheel is. And it's not just because I'm being a Luddite and saying, oh, why should you steer by autopilot? But if you think about all the sailing we've done, 20,000 miles, the number of times, and I'd probably say it's between half a dozen and a dozen times, where we've seen something in the water within probably 10 seconds of collision, whether it be a lobster pot or something else, and been out, I just veer the wheel. Off goes autopilot and you veer the wheel. And you can't do that in autopilot. The autopilot won't respond that rapidly. So there are times when you are going to rapidly, rapidly need to move that wheel. I'm not sure how quickly those autopilots react, but I know that ours, you know, if, if I push the button, you know, we've got a really high-end Garmin system, you know, a 15 degree change yeah. takes it a while. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're looking at five to 10 seconds till yeah. you've got that course change, which may not be, it may be too long. So to me, and I suppose to us, we talked about this at depth. Yeah. Your primary home station is the one with the wheelers. Yeah. And that needs to have protection. Yeah. For long passages, mm -hmm. because I appreciate that you can you can helm from a sofa, you can helm from inside, but there are going to be huge amounts of time when you are going to want to be at your home station. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate what Katana owners and you know the outboard you know the outboard helms the Naughty Techs um, are saying. Docking, absolutely amazing. You know, going forward, visibility, absolutely amazing. Long passages, unusable. Unusable. Mm -hmm. So, this is obviously a big debate on the internet. Home stations, no home stations, you know, protected home stations mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. Um, we had friends who just took delivery of an Naughty Tech about a week ago. Mm -hmm. um, and we said to them, how are you going to get on with these? They've got the... Uh, the open, open version. Mm. They said we don't envisage a problem with the hel exposed helms. Mm. They messaged us, messaged us what last week. Mm. We got very, and saying you know we got very very wet um, there. And Naughty Tech do have covers you can buy. You can build, have little bimini frames built for mm. them for protection. So yes, the helm station for us is a big issue, and would need to be protected. What are your thoughts? Is there anything you wanted to add to that? Well, just about saying you're not going to steal my thunder <laughs> five minutes later. <laughs> Anything you wanted to add, my love? You've you've said it all. I, I stole think. it, did I? Yeah, you did. I you stole my thunder. <laughs> that was my speech. What about just a little rumble of a little rumble? A little rumble of thunder. <laughs> a little rumble of flash of lightning. Look, I I um I just personally I really dislike those open helm stations. It's the last place I want to be. I don't want to be out in the elements. I want to be uh, protected. I want to have a hard top bimini above me. I want to have preferably like a a, um, a hard screen. What do you call it? Like a dodger or a spray hood? It's a spray hood or a dodger depending on where you are. Where you are in the world, whatever. You know what I mean. I want to have all the lines running back to the one place or just about. I want to have all my instruments there. I want to have the engine controls there. I just want to be able to sit there with everything literally at my fingertips 
on watch and be able to see everything while being completely protected. I mean, is that so much to ask? With an outboard helm station, yes. yes. Right, look, we both agree, and we, you know, we could talk at length about this. Yeah. It is a beautiful boat. Yeah. If we had the money, if we had 1.1, 1.3 million dollars lying around down the back of this sofa, um, would we buy one? I just don't think we would. No, I the, think the, the helm stations roll it out for me, and it doesn't have, I mean, sometimes you think, well, the red line becomes a little bit more blurred because everything else is so amazing. But the fact is that Katana don't um, tick enough other boxes for us to compromise on. The I, think, I, I agree with you. I don't think for us there was enough wow factor yeah. for me to go, all right, yeah, sod it, we're going to get one. And you know, Uchimaya, I know we, we bang on about Uchimaya a lot. You know, I love that 51. Mm. Um, the review was out a couple of weeks ago. People tend to express the same thing. It, it, it really splits the pack, the Uchimaya. Yeah. You know, people absolutely love it and they're like, well, no, I know, but it's still an Uchimaya yeah. and I want one. Yeah. Um, but that helm station, that, the, the, you can, that primary helm station, should you want it, you can have a Dodger built over the top of it. Yeah. And you can have your primary helm station fully protected. Mm. So not having that option at all, to me, makes it almost a red line. Yeah. Um, so it, I think there are hundreds, if not thousands, of very, very happy and possibly slightly pissed off Katana <laughs> owners now. But well, I, I encourage any Katana owners watching this and who have something to say on this matter to yeah. comment down below because there is nothing that beats personal experience. We have never sailed on one of these before. I can't imagine dealing with those open helms long term uh, but if you have we have friends who do if you have then please comment down below and let us know how you do with them um, yeah I'd be really interested to know look I think on long passages um, no one stands out there you'd have to be no, of course you don't. you'd be a lunatic and this is another thing that I would say and I think that we discussed it with Jessica on that video mm. <clears throat> the importance of having double or two autopilots oh yeah you have at least, you know, you have at least, um, you know, an, a backup motor. I would go so far as to say that that's probably essential on any catamaran, no matter what the homing position is like, because uh, you're not going to be able to have self steer. So, yeah. as in a hydroplane. Or, yeah. yeah, you know, any sort of. Agreed. I mean, yes, on, on a 50 foot catamaran, there is no self steer in the world that will work or not completely ruin the look of the boat. <laughs> it has been done on catamarans, but. Um, so. Uh, Anything else you want to say about the Katana 53? No, I, I did like it and I think that it was very well designed. Yes. And I have to say that uh, watching it again, watching the footage again, I actually liked it more mm -hmm. kind of on the second time um, than I did on the first. So I, I like the Katana very much and I always have done. I just don't think that it's for us. Agree. And I think that Katana are, especially with this 53, are in a very small pool of boats that are being considered by the upper echelons mm. of kind of like you know people of, of the of the of the kind of like the, the rich yeah people that want, have got over a million to yeah. spend on a boat yeah you've got a lot of options if you if your budget is around a million and you you're wanting a 50 foot catamaran and i do think that katana are probably losing out to sea wind and, and uh, yeah pri well, and privilege and also all the south african builders that we've not even touched upon yeah. and <clears> you know even the um the production uh, catamarans you know uh you know lagoon leopard what fontaine Peugeot. There's so many options when you are looking at that type of boat. Uh, but 50 foot performance catamaran. Talk about double yeah, boards. Okay. Uchima, yeah. Sea Wind, Katana. Katana yeah. So those are the three. So people understand from everything that they've seen themselves through looking at our stuff on the internet and other stuff on the internet, yeah. it's performance and lack of space or put you know lesser performance and more space mm. so if you have focused yourself on performance and space yeah. uh, sorry, performance and lack of space in that bracket you have really those three options mm. naughty tech are production cat gumbo are a different level so it's that's where you are mm. and i just think that they're probably losing out yeah i think so well. okay well listen that is uh the beautiful katana 53 again thank you to jessica and her husband for showing us around now um we will be heading off to annapolis soon to review 
lots more of these boats to see lots more of these boats and there's a lot um that we will be seeing so um for those of you who keep messaging us are we going to review the exquisite yes <laughs> definitely going to review that exquisite it's definitely coming maverick i think maverick is showing yeah. um definitely going to see antares definitely going to see balance we're seeing i really want to see balance um sea wind is showing the 1260 yeah super um, happy about that so nisner nisner definitely yeah um what else Maverick, have we well, said, yeah, Maverick? said Maverick? Yeah, so there's a lot of catamarans that we're going to go and see, and we'll also revisit some of the production catamarans that we've already seen, but look at other models. Okay. So if you have any uh, preference, then please let us know. So Maverick Supersonic, there in 30 seconds. <laughs> you know where that quote's on, right? No. <laughs> Top Gun! Oh, really? Thank you for watching. <laughs> see you soon. Bye bye. So please feel free to subscribe, click that notification bell so that you never miss an update.